Time now for the world famous and world renowned OTR pop quiz. Are you ready for the OTR pop quiz? I think so. You think so? Here we go. Take a deep breath and here we go. Question. And by the way, the answers are going to be on the screen. So look right at the screen there. <laughs> I won't look. And no, no. I want you. You've got to pick one of them. Okay. Oh, so okay. The, so the pop quiz is all about Cape Cod. Right. The first transatlantic wireless communication originating in the United States was sent from Marconi Station in Wellfleet. It was a message between President Theodore Roosevelt and what other leader? Was it the King of England? Was it the President of France? Or was it the King of Spain? Probably the King of England. Excellent, yes. By the way, his name was Edward. Edward the Seventh. Edward the Seventh. No relation, by the way. Brewster was once part of another Cape Cod town. On the screen, we offer three choices. Dennis, Harwich, or Orleans. That'd be Harwich. 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 The older, older of the two. Dennis and Orleans are, are newer towns. Separation took place in 18, 1693, so a long time Probably ago. Probably over a church or something. Chatham, right? <laughs> Chatham has a team in the Cape Cod Baseball League. So what is the Chatham team's nickname? Is it the Anglers? Is it the Shacks? Or is it the Mariners? It's the Sharks, of course. And it's the it's the Anglers. It's the Angler. I'd say, I was worried about a sports question. The, the Mariners. <laughs> Not my strong suit. The Mariners, by the way, belong to Harwich. And here's the other thing. It you, should be the Sharks out of Chatham. No Chad one on the Cape is called the Sharks in the Cape Cod Baseball League. Well, that's maybe we got to so create one out of Chatham. There you go. Yeah. There you go. All right. <laughs> and we're going to talk about TV. The 1990s sitcom Wings was set on Nantucket. What was the name of the one plane airline that was run by the Hackett brothers? Was it Harpoon Air? Was it Flying Cod Air? Was it Sandpiper? air hmm when we go to Nantucket we do have lunch a lot at the airport because it's a nice little restaurant right um I would say Sandpiper you air. got it three okay, out of four it. Sandpiper before my time, air. but by the way the bonus the name of the airport was Tom Nevers Field on the TV show so and, and Tom Nevers is a, a famous location and, and place and road and area in Nantucket bingo ding 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 go. ding there see Cape and the Islands right there see there you go not too bad. So you are an advocate for the LGBTQ community and the Senate has passed a bill recently that would allow a non-binary option on birth certificates and driver's licenses here in Massachusetts, making it legal to put an X on the gender line. Now, why is this significant? So this is all about catching up with where people are, particularly younger people. Um, according to the Youth Risk Behavior Survey, which is a biannual survey of students in Massachusetts, um, now over 16% uh, of young people in the state identify as LGBTQ. Many of them identify as non-binary and transgender. Uh, and so if you're trying to navigate your life, you're trying to get your driver's license, you're trying to do a whole host of things, and you've got to mark a box on a, on a sheet of paper that isn't consistent with you are, with, with who you are, right? That's, that's just sort of not right. So this is something that the Senate president has, has really led on, and, and also my colleague Joe Comerford, um, something we've done in the Senate many times. And I think it's just about meeting people where they are. Uh, and, and, and that's where a lot of the policy work is for, for the LGBTQ community these and days. What about the cost, though? Does the cost on this fall to taxpayers? So this is actually a policy that the Registry of Motor Vehicles is, has already implemented. It was actually something we pushed them to do uh, when I led the state's LGBTQ Youth Commission before being elected. Uh, so there's actually no real sort of new significant cost as it relates to driver's licenses. Um, there's some work that needs to be done in vital records, but it, it's not significant. Uh, it's really about sort of updating a few computer programs. But the RMV, we actually petitioned the RMV while they were going through the procurement process a few years ago, maybe like eight years ago, to make sure that they could have multiple gender options in the software they're buying. So that's already baked in. So there's a pretty minimal or negligible cost to there, taxpayers. There's one thing we do on OTR when we have politicians on is we ask them about the future because that's, you know, that's always fun to talk about. <laughs> so if Bill Keating does not run for another term in Congress, would you consider a run for his seat? I mean, you know, look, I'm someone who, you know, I, I really realize that, uh, you know, a queer, 30-something from the small town of Cape Cod that are not supposed to be state senator. So I, I really have a lot of humility about that stuff. Um, certainly, I would take a look. You know, Bill's got a, a lot of years of service left in him, I think, but would take a real look at that, I think. I also wonder, you know, where can you really make a difference on the issues that the region faces? Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I think about housing, when I think about wastewater, when I think about the work that we have to do on Cape Cod, right. I really am, am proud to have the opportunity to, to do the work that I can get done in the Senate. Right. Um, and I want to really keep doing that, but certainly, you know. Having a, a voice in Congress. We'll see. You're we'll open see. To it. You're I mean, open to I mean, it. of course. I mean, I'm a 35 year old right. elected official, right. I, and I'm not, I'm not burnt out right. yet. But, right. but I think, you know, when I, when I think particularly about the housing, 
challenge that we have in the region. We've got to get so mm -hmm. serious on housing. Mm -hmm. I can do a heck of a lot more on housing in the state Senate um, regionally, right, specifically than I could do in Washington. You and can so, do more in the state Senate. Oh, absolutely, oh, right? I mean, I mean, when you look at what, what you can kind of get done, and so right. I feel really grateful for the right. opportunities I've had. You know, this mental health legislation that I've been able to work on, um, leading for the Senate, you know, the Senate president's really key vision there. Um, so I love my job. Like I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not in a haste to, to, to move on to the next thing. Um, but certainly, politics is politics, and you know, you take the opportunities as they come. Great to have you with us this morning. It's so nice Thanks to be with you. Thank you. On the record, our thanks to.